Hi, welcome to the Product Design Show. I'm Allison Topperwine. And I'm Vince Penman. In today's episode, we'll answer the questions, why do we use parametric modeling, and where is it most valuable? Parametric modeling has been the gold standard for creating 3D models since the late 1980s. At the time, designers were having problems organizing the math and geometry that went into their designs. Parametric modeling software organized the complex formulas required to create feature geometry, separating the mathematical foundations of a hexagon from the wish to have one appear. Once designers could create feature geometry without mathematically proving a shape's boundaries, they were free to build models that explored the limits of their imagination. Beyond automating the time-consuming mathematics of design, parametric models brought forward a series of profound advantages. For example, once you created a feature that was used in many designs, you could archive that feature so that in the future, it could be recalled rather than remodeled. This ability to recall geometrical information means that parametric modeling has the ability to embed knowledge into your part, and that knowledge can be passed from engineer to engineer throughout the life cycle of a product. So parametric modeling is sort of like Homer's Odyssey in that generations of engineers can know the history of how the flange and pipe segment first came together. But that's not the end of parametric modeling's advantages. Because every piece of geometry has a concrete mathematical foundation, precision can be built into a feature by relating it to another thing. Parametric modeling allowed the use of constraints to lock geometry into place so that it can't be altered by accident later on during the design process. You can look at constraints as a way to ensure that any modifications to a design are done so with design intent in mind. If we jump up another level where sketches have become solid features, we see the same strength repeated. As features are built up to create the shape of a model, each piece of geometry can be related to the ones that preceded it. As these features accumulate, more relations are created and a stronger model is built. Parametric modeling introduced the concept that if you modify one dimension of a feature, any related features will update immediately. This is especially useful when you're designing complex models or are looking to make multiple configurations of a part. Another advantage of a fully developed parametric model is that it can be accurately analyzed by many software tools to give the designer a true depiction of how it would behave in the real world. That means if you're creating an airplane wing section, you can run it through a virtual wind tunnel and discover any flaws in the design before it makes it to manufacturing. The same is true for the tension cables you might have to design for a suspension bridge. Parametric modeling software allows you to apply accurate material properties to your model so you can analyze the strength of your cable before you ever bring it into the real world. Parametric modeling derives much of its power and usefulness from its strong mathematical foundations. For the most part, it's an asset. But math, like all sciences, is based on rules. And as designers, sometimes we have to break them. So how do we get around the inflexible rules of parametric modeling? Well, that's where direct modeling comes in. In a future episode, we'll talk about direct modeling and how, in combination with a parametric approach, it can help designers create a more agile environment for product design. Thanks to PTC for sponsoring this episode. To learn more about flexible modeling, visit ptc.com slash go slash flexible modeling. And thanks for watching this episode of the Product Design Show. Please give it a like on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, or give us a rating on iTunes.